Hello, this is Václav and now we're gonna look at uh, the Ikaria and we will walk step by step through its features. So this is sort of a video manual. So let's uh, get started. Uh, the Ikaria uh, is a stereo filter or it's two filters in parallel. So it can be either used as a stereo filter or you can do a lot of interesting tricks with it. So um, let's just start by running a simple signal through it. So here are the two inputs, left and right, and the outputs, left and right. So I'm gonna connect both outputs and connect just uh, one signal into the left input. And this arrow here um, says that the left input is normalized to the right input, so unless I plug something else into the right input, uh, the left one is going to be copied in, in there. So uh, the, the default uh, setting of the filter is all knobs centered and minimum resonance. So if I center all the knobs, I hear the input signal. Uh, so this is uh, like an open filter scenario and um, if I turn now with the cutoff, if I go into the left, it is a low pass filter and if I go to the right from the center, it is a nice high pass filter. So uh, one more thing to notice when you do like running a sort of clean filter scenario is the input. Uh, the input knob is super important on the on the filter and it kind of sets uh, the whole uh, thing in motion. It influences pretty much everything on the filter, how loud you set the input signal. So uh, the input can boost up to five times. So when I'm using um, a modular oscillator like this one, it will actually overdrive the input of the filter, which I think is like super exciting. So let's add more. So the signal is gonna be boosted and a little more distorted. If I go on full. It, uh, it uh, translates a lot more in the high pass mode. So if you really overdrive the filter, if you overload the input, the high pass filter doesn't really cut the base, which is quite a common thing with filters. But with this one, it's especially kind of nice because you kind of don't lose the base, but you so somehow get like two resonant sweeps with one knob turn. So you get that without losing the bass. If I turn the input to the middle, which is a little bit, then it might be a bit less. But uh, yeah, you have nice low pass, a nice high pass. So if you now look at the drawing I have here, this is just uh, to show you if you're new to filters, uh, this might be helpful as a visual representation. So if you imagine frequency spectrum from low frequencies to high frequencies, this is how you would sort of cut the spectrum and uh, this would be only left in the spectrum. So this is the low pass mode, so it only lets the low frequencies through the filter. So I turn the knob like this and it cuts somewhere, some, somewhere in the midst. And the higher I turn the knob, the more frequencies it lets through. And then further in the high pass mode, it starts to cut the low frequencies. And the higher I go, the less bass it is. It only lets the high frequencies pass. Okay, so there is this resonant peak here, and uh, this is what you can see nicer in this drawing. So uh, basically the resonance 
uh, is a control that emphasizes the cutoff frequency that is controlled with the cutoff knob. And the resonance pretty much says how much of the resonance is there. So the more, the more resonance, the more, the more pronounced the impact of the filter on the sound. Okay, so I mentioned briefly that it's uh, two filters that are in parallel. Here is uh, another drawing that shows everything about the filter in one drawing. It might be a bit too much uh, uh, for a short video like this, but you can find uh, this in the menu of the filter. So what, what I want to show here mainly is how the inputs and outputs are routed. So I already mentioned that if you don't plug anything into the right input, the left signal gets copied in there, it's normalized. So then the signal runs through each filter and then at, at the output of each filter there is a VCA uh, that can control the amplitude of the filter and then sort of in the in the output stage you have this thing that if I would not plug anything into the right output the right output would get mixed into the left output and I would get those two signals mixed together uh, so this would mix both uh, the left and right channels at the output together and there is also the beyond output we will talk about uh, in, a, in a second that is sort of like a difference of those. Uh, so let's, let's look at this. So now I'm actually running two filters in stereo. Uh, if I... Okay, let's... Let's, uh, let's look at the stereo control. Uh, so, um, in the drawing, again, uh, you can uh, see uh, this is sort of like the CV control of the cutoff. So there is the cutoff knob and there is the modulation, volt per octave, but then there is the stereo control. So um, if I'm uh, using the stereo knob, uh, with the switch in the spread position, this one would basically detune uh, the cutoff frequency of the left and right filter. So when I turn the stereo knob to the left, you already hear some stereo effects. So please make sure you listen with headphones. We're gonna be doing a lot of stereo. So you can, you can hear that the two filters move in opposite directions. The left filter sort of moves as if I would be moving the cutoff filter and the right filter moves in the opposite direction. So, so now uh, what I will do is I will disconnect the right channel. And basically now I have a mono filter, but there are two filters in a parallel. And if I detune them with the, with the stereo spread, I can get uh, two resonant peaks in the filter. So if I do that, I get this nice sort of formant type sounds. And if I put even more resonance, it has this like throat-like uh, character. And now, uh, as I'm applying more resonance to the signal, it's very Im important to also look at the input knob because um, basically the level of the input signal uh, also changes the proportion to the resonance. So the louder the input uh, signal, the quieter the resonance would seem because the signal would overpower the resonance. 
and the quieter the signal is, the, the more pronounced the resonance will be. So let's let's hear filter sweeps. Okay, so this is like really nice throaty character. If I put a little bit less of the input. I get a lot more of the resonance in there. And if I put more, the resonance goes somewhat in the background. And if I overdrive the input, which is sort of like the end, it almost, it almost kills the resonance in a way. So, for these formant type sounds, it's good to be somewhere in the middle with the input. And it's kind of good to be somewhere in the middle just to start with it. And you can of course go to the left, to the right. It, it really depends also on the loudness of your input signal. So the input knob, very important. Uh, another thing that I think it's quite nice to mention about this filter is that it's designed that you can play it with one hand. So you can tweak the cutoff, the resonance, like this. With just like one hand. It also works with the other hand, of course. be the only filter that does that. Um, good, so uh, this was the routing of uh, the left and right channel. So I want to show you another drawing here. So if I'm uh, only listening to the left output, I get a spectral addition of those two filters. So filter affects the spectrum of the sound it either cuts the high frequencies or, or the low frequencies. And uh, if I'm listening only to the left output, I get the sum of the left and the right. If I detune the filters more, the two cutoffs get further apart from each other. So, I also mentioned that uh, there was a, the beyond output. And the beyond output could be also called a difference output or a sort of twin peak filter output. And it basically is, uh, it is subtracting the left and right channels from each other. So what you hear is the difference spectrum of those filters. So let's, let's listen to that. So, in a sort of ideal conditions. Let's put less resonance. If I put the stereo knob in the, in the center, the signal gets quieter because um, basically the two spectrums are the same. So the cutoffs are at the same place. So if I um, make a difference, I don't hear anything. Of course, this is an analog circuit, so there is a bit of deviation, so I hear a little bit of something. But uh, the more I detune those filter with the stereo spread, I basically get variable width bent pass filter. So, uh, as you can see on the drawing, I will basically hear only what is in between the two cutoffs. So, um, yeah. And if I sweep the spectrum like this, you can hear I start off with only the low frequencies. Now I have only the mids and only the heights. And if I go to the high pass mode, again, we'll hear the lows, mids and highs. So this is, this is a very different spectral response than with the, with the left output. And the more you detune the filters, the broader the filter is going to get. 
the, the wider uh, the band pass filter is going to be. It's a bit more pronounced with the resonance applied. Okay, so uh, this is the beyond output and this topology of a filter is actually called Twin Peak Filter Topology. You might have heard uh, about the Twin Peak Filter from Rob Hordijk, which is like very famous filter and I think it utilizes some of this uh, topology. So uh, there is two resonant peaks, therefore the Twin Peak. And uh, I think on the Twin Peak filter you, you have two, two um, independent cutoff knobs, but here basically you get sort of the macro, how far apart they are from each other. So that's the stereo spread. Okay. So, yeah. So this was the beyond output. And... Um, I think let's uh, let's look at all the other connections now. Oh no, let's look at the the main uh, sort of feature. Let's listen to the left output again. So another really great feature uh, here is the envelope follower. Uh, the envelope follower uh, is a uh, is sort of like a module built in. It's the follow section. There is the flow output and the follow switch. And he uh, and this section it looks at the input uh, waveform or the, the input signal, and it uh, gives out a signal that represents the loudness of the signal or some sort of variation of the loudness. And there are three options. There is slow, mid, and fast. Uh, and each of them has a very specific use case. If we look at the drawing uh, here, um, I didn't really have a color printer, but uh, uh, let's say the black thing is your input signal. So if uh, you have varying um, amplitude at the input, uh, the slow signal would basically serve on top of the waveform and would uh, give you so, um, like the loudness representation of the signal. Uh, the mid setting would be a bit more, uh, how to say, a bit more hairy, <laughs> that would be a lot more um, mm, dive ins in the signal. And with the fast setting, it would be like really fast and it would basically sort of like just uh, almost copy the waveform or uh, it would, uh, sort of do like a full wave rectified version of the signal. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, it's fun, it's great. For those of you who don't, it's sort of like um, double the frequency of, of your input waveform. Uh, basically, what, uh, what it translates to that the fast setting can um, do some really aggressive uh, modulations to your signal. So, basically with a static waveform like this, uh, I have the follow, so, uh, the follower output <laughs> is normalized into the modulation input, and the modulation input modulates the cutoff of the filter. If I take a LFO and uh, connect it to the mod, I can just use the modulation knob, it's an attenuator, so to the right it uh, increases the modulation in the positive way, and to the left it uh, makes like an inverted version of that modulation. So, but by default here the follow output is normalized into the mod input that would affect the cutoff. So, if I do it with the slow setting, you pretty much get the same effect as if I would be tweaking the cutoff. 
Uh, and that's because uh, the amplitude of the in input signal is pretty much static. If I go to the fast response, on the other hand, you would hear that it creates a lot more aggressive response of the filter and it becomes sort of like a liquid uh, sort of like an instable liquid type filter so this is the fast setting so if you if you're aiming for a bit more aggressive sounds the fast setting on the envelope floor is very useful you can also modulate in the negative direction so you can get these sort of like a liquid type okay i hope you get the idea but uh, if you would be listening to something like a beat let's connect the opz here so, so let's go to the slow setting again. So now the filter is responding to the input level of the signal. So now uh, it mainly responds to the kick because that's the loudest thing in the signal and it moves the cutoff with, with the kick. So it's sort of like an envelope of the kick drum. Uh, if you are into guitar pedals, this is often called auto filter or auto wah. So you can sort of like use this effect on also live instruments and it will very much res uh, respond to the dynamics. Uh, and talking about dynamics, uh, also the envelope follow response response to the input gain. So if I, if I add more input gain, it would be a lot more pronounced effect on the sound as well, but it would also overdrive the filter a bit more. So now, so now I'm modulating the kind of in the positive direction, but I can also go into the negative direction to open the filter. Open the filter for that. So now with, with, the, with the kick drum, everything else, like the cutoff goes down, so it kind of cutoffs the high frequency for there, and then it sweeps up. Now the resonance is very high up, so it, it's very pronounced. But also when I go to the high pass mode, so it will be high pass, and now like with the kick, it actually goes down, so the bass is gonna be there. But everything else, if the kick drum is not there, it's just gonna cut off the lows. But I can also do the opposite thing, just make it go into positive direction. So when the kick is there, it's gonna remove the bass. So with those two knobs, you can pretty much surgically say what, what is going to happen with the sound, depending on the input amplitude. And we're still listening in mono, but let's listen in stereo. Let's detune those two. So what I can also do is that I can take the follower output and modulate the stereo itself. So the stereo detuning. So, so let's turn off the cutoff modulation on its own and let's so uh, once you plug a cable into the stereo cv input uh, the stereo knob becomes a attenuator of that signal so now if you're listening in stereo both left and right channels are affected like the opposite direction
cool. Yeah. So let's listen again. Here on the mod input. So we were now uh, using the envelope follower in the slow setting. If I flip to the mid position, you can hear there is a lot more happening. Like, you know, it reacts also to the hi-hats a bit more. It doesn't only do the slow things. The more you turn it up, the more it does that. And also with the kick, it kind of distorts it a bit more. And it's gonna be even more pronounced, it's gonna be even more liquid if I flip to the fast setting. I hope you get the idea. So this is the envelope floor section. Uh, I think it's also good to mention, now I've been processing like a beat from something else, but if you have like a, is this playing? Uh, I, so maybe you have some sort of like a synth uh, type thing in your modular or a sample and uh, maybe it's, it's either a sample or a physical modeling thing or you just don't have the envelope to modulate the filter so So this is pretty much the filter without any external modulation. So this is just using the built-in envelope flow. So you can do a lot with that. Um, yeah. So now let's talk about um, the CV inputs a little more. Um, the uh, pretty much everything on the filter is voltage controlled. Uh, now that I've disconnected from any source. I can show you that the resonance, the filter self oscillates, you can detune the two. Also modulate the resonance with CV. I'm gonna take some CV and as soon as I do that the resonance is pretty much going to be um, the, the maximum uh, it's going to be the maximum uh, resonance. So now, uh, as soon as I plug a cable, the resonance fader becomes an attenuator of the signal. Okay. Good. So, um... Now, let's talk about the pan mode. So, until now, we have been using the stereo um, potentiometer in the spread mode. So this mode, it detunes the left and the right filter. But if I flip to the panning mode, I'm basically just doing panning. So I go to the left, I go to the right. I can plug uh, LFO and do some voltage controlled panning like that. So and I can flip the switch and have the have the different stereo effect. So it's either or cool. 
so yeah i think the only input i haven't really mentioned is the volt per octave input that's a sort of like a second uh, that's like a second cv input for the cutoff if you if you work with uh, like a quantized quantized voltage source it should respond to volt per octave if you if you're using it in the self oscillation mode or with some sort of pinging it should respond to that there is also a trimmer so you can you can trim that um, yeah the last thing i want to mention in this video uh, is uh, the steepness of the filter and how you can make it steeper filter so uh, if you look at uh, the drawing here again um, this filter is a 12 decibel per octave steepness filter so if, if you're cutting off you can either like cut like really sharp um, that's often done with the 24 db filters uh, so uh, they, they lose a lot more uh, volume with the frequencies per uh, octave per frequency scale um, but this filter is 12 db however if you uh, take uh, the left output run it into the right input and then listen to the right output like this you basically get a 24 db filter so now if i'll be filtering the signal okay it would cut uh, the highs now in the low pass mode like much steeper and i think it's even more impressive in the high pass mode because high pass filters are quite rare to be 24 decibels but with this filter you can get like very steep like very uh, aggressive uh, filtering with this filter I think uh, using it in this mode is like really exciting because you can get like this um, sort of very specific filter response but also it's pretty interesting if you overdrive the input and bring up the resonance and maybe even like detune the filters a little bit you get like a really nasty aggressive fil filtering which I really really like um, if you s flip the envelope follower uh, into the fast mode and do some of this aggressive filtering and bring up a bit of the modulation there you get a lot of sounds and again it's very responsive to the input level so I'm in this like super nice territory but as soon as I pump up the input level and start to overdrive you get this like really nasty nasty characters okay uh, the very last thing we haven't really talked about uh, is the VCA CV input so as soon as I plug that in uh, I mentioned that there is VCA at the output of each filter and it actually is part of the topology itself uh, how, we, how we do the low pass and how high pass sort of crossover but uh, if you just plug a cable like this you basically get silence so this plus uh, arrow to the input means that there is a voltage normalized to the input and if I plug um, an LFO or maybe I do an envelope which is a bit more something slower I can basically use the stereo VCA as the sort of like classic VCA after filter um, trick uh, I use um, 
stackable or a, or a, or a multiple. You can also modulate the cutoff like that. I think this is the last input that we haven't used yet on the filter and I think this is it for this video. The next video is going to be patch tips so I'm gonna go, go through some of the specific use cases of using this filter and what you can do, how far you can push it. So thank you for watching, this was the video manual, video manual for the Ikaria and see you in the next video.